Hey everybody, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restorations with another short video from my uh, collection of machines that I've worked on. This particular machine is, uh, yeah, it's not an oddball, I don't mean it that way, but uh, the reason that I had it to work on it is a little, a little different than most. So I'll give you a little bit of history about it real quick here. Um, has the Chicago Bear Playfield, and uh, that was a request of the owner. And whoever did the work, um, it was a mystery. Um, not a mystery as to who did it. Well, actually, I don't know who did it anyway, but that, that doesn't matter. A mystery in the sense that if you know how to change a playfield, you know that it, you, you literally have to strip the entire machine to change a play field because you need to get right down to the bare board to be able to do it effectively. You have to pull all the nails out and scrape the old one off, so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> so anybody that goes to that length, um, I, I don't understand why they wouldn't have done more to the machine, I guess, is, is the way I would put it. Um, this machine, when I got it, and the reason that the customer sent it to me is from here to here, the machine was absolutely filthy. Um, this was all just just really dirty. Uh, the uh, aluminum was in bad shape. There, I don't know what the heck was growing in here. And this had, had taken water damage to the point where it had all corroded. It was just horrible. And I, again, I don't know why anybody would, would go to this length and then not at least do a cursory, um, cause they took this off and painted it and they painted this, whatever. Um, so he asked me to fix it, long story short. So I was hoping that I could just replace this because most of these are, I believe all made by the same manufacturer. Um, unfortunately this, this pattern here for the screws was off a little bit from anisogen and, and uh, I couldn't just put a new one on. So fortunately this one did clean up relatively well. Um, all of these parts got cleaned. I scrubbed all the, the crud off of the aluminum, got it nice and shiny again. Uh, the bottom I laid into pretty good and got that, that nice and shiny. Uh, this all got cleaned, and I, I just added a little bit of detail there just to kind of spruce it up. Now, the one thing that um, about this machine is this piece here normally hinges out with, this is a Kayo Roku Sangyo, S-A-N-G-Y-K-O, Kayo Roku Sangyo. Uh, this drops down, and unfortunately, this part of the clip is broken so the two parts don't latch into each other so when the first time I opened the door this thing just flopped down scared the crap out of me at any rate um, that's something you need to watch out for when you do open the doors this is going to flop down there's just no way of keeping it up there it, it'll stay there with the door shut obviously but uh, this has also has a very interesting ball handling mechanism um, to me, way over-engineered. Um, again, that's just me. I like it simple. Uh, the, the ball handling mechanism works fine. There is a solenoid in here that is, um, this is my guess, and if anybody knows differently, certainly let me know. Um, in the parlors, the parlor operators would wanna know when the machines ran low on balls. So I believe, <clears throat> On the back side of this, uh, there's there's quite a complex uh, electrical setup here, and this is simply where the 10 volt power comes in. But I believe these terminals and where this other fuse would have been, I believe that would have been a connection to the parlor. And then down here is another leaf switch, kind of tucked up in here, and some wires. And one of those wires goes to that solenoid. So I believe under the correct um, voltage, that solenoid would work. And I also believe it was uh, part of this system that would say, there's not enough balls in the machine. Don't let the player play until we put more balls in. Uh, this does not function. Um, and, and because of that, 
there's a, an extra nail in there that's just pushing that little tab out of the way that allows you to continue to play when you run low on balls. So uh, besides all of that, the machine works fine. Um, this was not, th I, I don't believe this had been taken off and cleaned, but yet it wasn't all that dirty. So um, again, with talking to the customer, I left the back the way it was got the front cleaned up as, as best we could. I repainted this because this had all rusted and um, we decided his concern was the feet and, and the, the tippiness of the machine. So we talked about putting stabilization feet on and then he asked me if I could paint them orange to match the decor and I thought sure why not. And uh, so there it is. It, it's, it's really kind of a cool looking machine. It works well. So when you go to set this up <coughs> I'm going to plug the 12-volt uh, power supply into the wall and then plug it into the pigtail. And when you do that, this light will come on up in this corner. And that signifies that the, the balls, there's not enough balls in the machine. Now, this is the, the ball dump mechanism here. It's a little bit different than the Nisogen's. And what you want to make sure of is that these little L-shaped guys are stuck up in, in the lower track. If this is released and these are down like that and allowed to swing out, when you drop balls in, it'll just come right out the exit chute and that's no good. So make sure that lift up on this, let these drop, bring this back down so that they're stuck in here. And then when you put some balls in, they'll run into the jackpot chamber as they should. Uh, this little red plastic, if you have it tipped forward, it just stops the balls here. It's, it's a maintenance piece, so you want to make sure that's open and letting the balls in. So, once you know your flow is proper, and I can't stress this enough, if you have 500 pachinko machines, 200 or balls, 1,000 balls, doesn't matter. 95% of them are going to be loaded right here. This is, this is where they belong. They don't belong in the front of the machine. They don't belong in a, in a box. They belong loaded into the machine in the upper hopper. Keep in mind that when you own a pachinko machine, you also play the part of the parlor owner. You have to make sure the machine is ready to play besides the fact that you are the player. So keep that in mind, load the machine up, keep a handful to play with, but load the machine up with all the balls you have. <clears throat> this is the seesaw chamber. In this particular model, the seesaw is made of brass. Quite often they're white plastic. Uh, the seesaws should be tipped this way with the right end up, there we go right end up left end left end down quite often they're this way and that's not the right position to start the machine you want to make sure it's this way so in an effort to do that on all the machines if this covers on and you can't directly get at the seesaw underneath this cover is a little metal rod you can push up on and that will tip the seesaw up to where to the position that it needs to be in You'll also need some sort of little tray like that. The losing balls drop here, the winning ball will drop out here. So make sure you've got that sort of set up. Again, the, the uh, ball light is now out and that would shine through this red portion of the plastic. When you do get a prize, a jackpot, um, the yellow light will light up. So once the machine is properly loaded, in the back, you put a handful of balls in there and you start to launch them. Now, <clears throat> I will say one thing about this machine. Uh, among other things, whoever put it back together mismatched the tulips. Now, if you look at the tulips, they all look the same, which they are. I mean, the, 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 the look is the same. Functionally, they are different. Normally, a left side tulip will have an opening on the right side, so the ball going down will go this way. 
uh, right side tulip will have an opening on the left side and the ball would go that way. Uh, most of the time these guys doesn't really matter or they'll, they'll have a straight through. On, on a lot of machines, there will be an arm that sticks out and that arm interfaces with a, a mechanism that goes up or down depending on the way the balls travel through the center section. So if, it, if a ball goes down through the center section and the tulip is closed, that little mechanism will hit that, that arm and open the tulip if it's not already open. So in that case, the arm would be wherever the interface is. And on this machine, the arm would be on the, the right side. This arm would be on the left side. Well, whoever put the machine back together again, uh, not only left this tulip completely unattached, but they flip-flopped them. So the tulips weren't opening and closing the way they should. Took me a while to figure all of that out. Got all of that taken care of. I will say that without taking the back off, getting the everything clean, these tulips are still a bit on the quirky side. Um, normally when I test the tulips, uh, if a tulip is open, ball goes in, it closes. If a tulip is closed, ball goes in, it opens. These work, they're a tad quirky, but after I've played it, uh, you may see where a, a ball will go in there and it won't pay out. But as you play, all of a sudden, it'll, it'll release and you'll get the payout. Uh, I always caution people, if, if you play and a ball goes in and you don't get a payout, that's a signal to stop. And that's still good advice. You want to make sure that there's nothing physically wrong on the backside. This particular machine functions properly. It's just that the tulips are a little wonky. So 99% of the time you can play, you don't get a payout. Just keep playing and you'll all of a sudden you'll hear that extra payout. And if you get that, then you're fine. If, if you put, put a ball in and you just never get a payout, then you may want to take a look at the back. So let's just launch some balls, see if we can get some wins. There's one there. So when you do get a win, the yellow light lights up. And ideally, Okay, so what had happened is I had dropped a ball down through the center, which is, is the objective is to get a ball up in this area and let it drop down through the center. When it does, it will open the tulips. The tulips now are a much larger target, much easier to win. So overall, the machine's in great shape now. I uh, hope the customer's happy with it, and I hope you guys like it. Thanks.